Okay, here's a tutorial on uh, segments. Um, we got three major uh, uh, ideas with segments that we want to put in place. The first of which is the segment addition postulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this segment addition postulate written down. The word postulate is another name for definition. So segment addition is kind of almost one of those fundamental things where well, what is segment addition? Well, I must be adding segments together. And that is what you're doing. So we're going to get that down real quick for you. And then you can pause the screen and copy that down if you'd like. So here you go. The sum of the lengths of two segments equals the length of one segment created by the two smaller segments. So it seems like a lot of words that are there that basically tell us that it's okay to add two segments together to get the total length of a segment. So for instance, if there's a segment in example one uh, that's from A to C and B is somewhere in between there, then you can look at that as A, B, and B, C. So if you drew a picture to kind of match up with what they're saying, they say you got a segment A, C, and somewhere in here B is between there. Notice that B, B in between doesn't mean that B is necessarily in the middle. It just means that it's somewhere in between A and C. So our instinct would tell us that AB plus BC should equal AC, and that's exactly what the segment addition postulate tells you, is add the two pieces and you get the total. So that's what we're going to do for that problem right there. We're going to go ahead and figure out um, what the length of AC is according to the information that's here. So they told me that AB is 4 inches, and they've told me that BC is 2 inches, and even though my picture doesn't really match up with that, I could tell that I need to just add those two together and get a total of six. So AC must be six. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, that's really easy. Well, that's the foundation of what we're working with. Obviously, we can make that more complicated, throwing in some algebraic expressions and having to do a little bit more solving. But that is the bare bones of what's going on. Part plus part equals the total. All right, let's try it a little more complicated if L is between N and M. So first, I'm going to draw a segment here for N and M. Okay, I got my picture drawn here. got N and M, and L is somewhere between N and M. They tell me that NL is 6X minus 5, and they tell me that LM is 2X plus 3. Then they told me that NM, which is this entire length here, they told me that that was 30. Okay, so according to what this says is that NL plus LM should be equal to 30. All right, well, if I substitute NX minus 5 plus 2X plus 3 should be equal to 30, well, now I've just gone from a geometric problem to an algebra problem, and that's kind of my goal for every single one of these. So now I just go back to, to math 1 and solve this thing. So 6X and 2X makes 8X. Negative 5 and positive 3 is negative 2 equals 30. Add 2 to everything. And I'm trying to isolate my x. Finally, I want to divide by 8. x was equal to 4. So if I feel like I'm done, I need to double check that I've answered their question. They've asked me if L is between N and M, NL is that, LM is that. I figured out what x is. Now what I need to do is make sure I understand what the length of everything else is. So if they wanted me to know what NL is, I could substitute X in right here and 6 times 4 minus 5. If they wanted to know what LM was, the length of LM, then I would put an X right here. Uh, just one more thing to clarify real quick to make sure we're all on the same page. Notice that I just have the two letters here, not a segment symbol above it. What you are supposed to kind of know when um, you see just N, L together, that means the distance from N to L. So I'm only talking about numbers. I'm not talking about an actual object, actual segment. So keep that in mind. If you see me ever write that without a symbol above it, I'm talking about distance or length, not an actual object. The next couple scenarios that they give us, they do it without giving us word problems. Um, but they do kind of indicate what we should do to set up and solve. So they want us to solve for x here. Uh, notice that I've got x minus 6, 9, 2x minus 19. All three of those are the, the smaller segments that if I add them together, I should get the length 23. So your equation should look something like this. And I set it equal to the length 23. And then now again, back to math 1. And I combine like terms in order to solve 3x 
for my x and my 2x. Negative 6 and 9 is positive 3. Minus 19 is negative 16. And that's all equal to 23. Add 16 to both sides in order to isolate my variable. 3x is equal to 39. Divide everybody by 3. And x for this problem is 13. Okay, example 4 is a little bit more challenging because we have all algebraic expressions to use here. But according to what we see here, and we can't forget about this too, that 2x minus 4 plus the 2x minus 3, according to what I see here with these links, that includes that 2, should be equal to 3x minus 1. Again, it appears with this overlap here that I have to account for 2. So how am I going to do that? Well, I don't want to double count it. So what I think that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it off here. So negative 2 plus what I already indicated. And again, that keeps me from double counting. And that's one of those things that we could always get tripped up if we're not really paying attention. So that negative 2 is going to get subtracted. That's what adding a negative 2 does. It subtracts 2 um, to keep me from double counting as I do have overlap in this area right here. All right, so let's uh, combine like terms. Uh, 2x and 2x makes for 4x. Negative 2, negative 4 is negative 6. Negative 3 more is negative 9 equals 3x minus 1. Subtract 3x from everything. x minus 9 is equal to negative 1. Adding 9 here is x is 8. So x is 8. And what I can now do with that is answer their question. Again, like we said earlier, when you see BD, that means the length of segment BD or the distance from B to D. So BD would be right here, 2x minus 4. So I could substitute 8 for x, and now I can simplify to get the length of BD. 2 and 8 times 8 is 16 minus 4. 16 minus 4 is 12, and that's what BD is. Topics is this idea of midpoint. And a midpoint literally is what the name says it is, a point in the middle of a segment. So the definition here says a point that is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. So it's the same distance from either side of the segment. And the important thing that I've drawn even in this picture here, where B is the midpoint, these two hash marks on either side indicate that those distances A, B, and C, B are the exact same. That's what puts B at the midpoint, is it's equidistant from both A and C. Okay, let's talk about maybe how to use this idea of midpoint to solve. So if I slide down here to example 2, they're telling me that I want to find the value of x and the length of r to s given that q is the midpoint. So if q is the midpoint, then right away I can mark those two segments as being the same length. All right, next is the information that I'm going to include in my picture. It's going to tell me that RQ is T is 2x minus 6. So that's 2x minus 6 goes right there. QS is x plus 4. And again, because they told me that Q was the midpoint, these are congruent. That means that those are equal to each other. And that's my equation that I need to solve. You've got to set up an equation first before you could solve for anything. So 2x minus 6 is x plus 4. Subtract x from both sides, x minus 6 is 4, add 6 to it all, x is equal to 10. So now everywhere I see an x, I could put 10, but I don't have to put it everywhere. I just need to find out what the length of r to s is, which actually ends up being the total. So I'm going to do 2 times 10 minus 6. That's going to give me 20 minus 6, or 14. And since this is 14, because they're equal, this should be 14 for a total of 28. If I add those together, I can even double check that this should give me 14. And that's 10 plus 4 when I substitute in and I do get 14. So everything checks out. We did everything right. That's how I can use this idea of midpoint. Up in this tutorial is the idea of a perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector is a perpendicular line that goes through the midpoint 
of a segment. Now keep in mind that what it means to be perpendicular is that perpendicular lines form right angles. That's the most important thing. It's not just that they intersect two lines, that perpendicular lines intersect in such a nice way that they form right angles. So just using this example here, for example, one, this box here indicates that you've got right angles, and then these two markings indicate that FJ and HJ are equidistant from J, so J must be the midpoint. So you've got a perpendicular line going through the midpoint. So that means line GJ is the perpendicular bisector. Now, the perpendicular bisector theorem tells us that any point on a perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the seg from points on the segment that it bisects. So one of the things that I want to point out before I write that out is for instance G is going to be equidistant from F and H. Some point if I made like a random point M right here it's going to be equidistant from F to H. So here we go GF was equal to GH MF was equal to MH and we should have already known because J was a midpoint that JF was equal to JH but again J is on the perpendicular bisector so it's equidistant from the endpoints of whatever it bisected so here we're going to write that perpendicular bisector theorem says any point on on a perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment that was bisected. So I would encourage you to pause your screen real quick and make sure that you have written down your definitions and your relationships. So now that we've discussed what the perpendicular bisector theorem is, we're going to actually put it in motion. So line GJ is a perpendicular bisector, and um, we're saying that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment that got bisected. So we pointed out that GF is the exact same length as GH because G, this point should be the same distance from the endpoints of the segment FH that got bisected. Well, if this is 14, that means that this right here should be 14. And that's what they wanted us to find is the length of HG. So GH and HG, they are the same thing, and that's 14. Okay, so looking over here at example two, they make it a little bit more challenging, but you can see there's our perpendicular indicator with our right angle. There's our bisector indicator with the D being the midpoint because the segments on either side are congruent. So line DB is a perpendicular bisector of segment AC. So that means that BC should be the same as BA. All right, well, that means that um, 2x plus 6 should be equal to 3x plus 1. Well, there's my equation to solve. So I could solve for x and plug it back in anywhere I see x. So subtract 2x from both sides. 6 is equal to x plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. And 5 is equal to x. Now, anywhere I see an x, I could put a 5. So 3 times 5 plus 1 and 2 times 5 plus 6. Now these should be equal, but we'll check them just to make sure everything we're saying is correct. 15 plus 1 is 16. 10 plus 6 is 16. So each of those are 16. Now we can answer the questions. AD and BC are the two lengths that I'm looking for. Well, these are congruent according to the information that they gave us. So both of these should be 12. There's my AD. And then BC is this length here, so that's 16. So 12 and 16 are the two pieces of information, but if they would have asked me any other piece of information, I could have found that as well.